Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Timmy Strata, and you're listening to MMALatestNews.com. It's time to roll, baby. What is up, guys? Welcome back to MMA Latest. We're here with the UFC Brasilia pr- uh, review, even. We're here with Split Decision. I'm here with Johnny and James. You know, it's been a, a weird weekend of fights, but we had the event nonetheless behind closed doors. What did you make of the fights? Kevin Lee, another loss. Yeah, another loss for Kevin Lee. I think we both thought he might get a victory this time last week. We were previewing. We said that Kevin Lee has all the talent in the world. He's just not quite been able to put it together. But before we talk about the actual fight, what did you make of the event behind closed doors? Very weird to watch. It was a somber, a somber sort of um, yeah, mood. Was yeah, it was hard to get pumped up to the fights because there was a lack of atmosphere. But you're watching it going, oh, I'm ready for these fights. You're also watching it going, with everything that's going on, it's not the most positive of times. But... I appreciate that they continued the event. I appreciate that they tried to one as a fan. There's something to look forward to in an en- entertainment aspect. The fighters are on there to get paid. It is a really 50-50 sort of um, topic, but you know it. It you know all but three of the d- fights went to a decision, which you think that ha- did the crowd not having a crowd play a part in that. How how much can you put on the crowd? The judging seemed to be pretty okay. So again, how much of the judging can you put with there being a crowd on, a crowd off? And obviously, we've got the, the greatest night of all with Bisping saying to an empty arena, let's make, make some noise. noise. <laughs> you know what? Bisping's hilarious. It was quite funny. But uh, in terms of Kevin Lee, where does he go from here? Because he just seems to keep falling and short in these big matches. And, you know, we said last time he missed weight again. He was like two and a half pounds overweight. He missed weight this time? Yeah, he missed weight on Friday. So it's interesting. I didn't know that. I'll be honest with you. I didn't watch anything. I was at a boxing event and I didn't watch anything. Didn't watch any of the fights. I know, obviously, Kevin Lee lost... Um, but going back to the crowd thing is that obviously we're in a position with the pandemic where things are being put behind closed doors. It reminds me of with the UFC with Tough, you know, when yeah. they have the, well, like the, have the main fights. The no, the contender had, you yeah. mean Dana White's contender? Yeah, contender, yeah. contender so, yeah. And, and Tough as well. So it's like Tough where they do fight in the UFC gymnasium with no fans there. It's, so. it's a bit historic, isn't it? It feels like more gladiator. Yeah, it's You're watching eerie. two men in there by the in by themselves and you hear the corners going at it you know i didn't watch it though what was it like to watch it was weird like production value Produ- how were production they production value is the same it's the same it's just taking the volume of the crowd out did they have bruce buffer uh, no they had the um other joseph is it yeah, bruce buffer yeah. wasn't there no bruce buffer wasn't there so what was it like when when they were announcing a name because obviously yeah michael buffer bruce they're screaming could you really scream when there's no well i think they did there? it you know the production on site like the production value from the ufc was just as it would be for any other event it was just no crowd i, I, I wish i would have sorry Jim, i wish i would have watched it because i didn't see it from that aspect like what so you can watch like. it on bt sport on rerun i mean no, you can have all the time in the world to watch stuff so oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's no doubt no but i mean not one fight, I mean, as I presume you watched all of the fights. Yeah. So as the whole, like, two well, hours unfolded, yeah. so was it going to a studio back, or were, no, were they at the, they were were at they the event? So yeah, it was, uh, it was Rogan. Bisping, no, it was Bisping and Brendan Fitzgerald on the mic, and they were just sat next to the ring, the cage side. Yeah. You had the judges' cage side. You had did the do teams. interviews? Fact yeah, Octagon fight. interviews they did. So Gilbert Burns called out Colby Covington and then bleeped himself out because he was on ESPN, so that was quite funny. <laughs> But, it, yeah, it's such a weird event, but, you know, it's interesting what happened. Who else fought on it? Uh, Damien Meyer. Now, we spoke yes, about him. Yeah. I said Hall of Fame. My bone of contention last week was I don't think he should be no, in the Hall of Fame. I actually saw a tweet, like, straight after our little debate last week Damien about Damien Meyer saying absolute guaranteed Hall of yeah, Fame. Yeah. But either way, we did this huge spiel about Damien Meyer not been stopped since 2009. <laughs> I think 20-something <laughs> fights. Yeah. Nobody knocks out this man, and then boom, he gets knocked Joking. out straight away. Yeah, I'm vindicated then. No more <laughs> of fame for my. Yeah. Damien Mike, we're still an incredibly long stretch. Yeah, He's still Gilbert a fantastic Burns. fighter, and to finish Damien Mike is always an How did he get fate. stopped? Uh, TKO. By what? In the first round. Was it a strike? Punch, yeah, punching. Gilbert Burns came out, looked fantastic, and he's putting a bit of a run together now. They were both coming on win streaks. I think it was uh, a three fight win streak for Burns coming into this. You know, he only landed 13 strikes. It didn't take him long at all. May has got sloppy, sloppy uh, hands. He really has. He has improved. He but did he's get two takedowns. Even Ben Askren outboxed yeah. Damian Mayer. God, Ben Askren was horrendous. But it's interesting hands. now. Gilbert Burns, I think he was outside the top 10. So he'll be in the top 10 come Tuesday with the with the rankings coming out. So it's interesting. He called out Carby Covington. I think that's a step too far. Yeah, I mean, he's after a big fight. I mean, we were told from Dana White that there was a very good chance UFC London would be going ahead, even if it potentially was going to end up behind closed doors. Obviously, we had the announcement this week that it won't be going ahead. They wanted Leon Edwards to fly over to the US during a global pandemic Travel to continue. Pandemic. But yeah, it, just, no. it just wasn't going to happen for Leon. The it was reason, just too big an ask. But it's sorry. off. 
The reason why we'll talk about this in the, in the debate later on this week. Um, the reason why the UFC wants want the fights to continue behind closed doors is the viewing figures will be astronomical because people are going to be at home. People want the yeah. fix of fighting. So yes, not having a the crowd there makes a difference. But when you're at home and there's nothing there, you're going to be like itching to watch something. So that's why Dana White is scrambling because he think knows. Also, he also knows that there's jobs on the line and you know these fighters that uh, put their cell through a three-month camp and yeah. now have no paycheck to come to now. You know, we had Bellator 241 um, supposed to happen another week and where Pedro Caravaglio yeah. was going to be in the featherweight tournament. And they they went through their weight cut up until I think it was about 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Friday night the event was on and they got called off. But Scott Coker came out and said everyone got paid their, their show-in fee. Yeah. And everyone got paid. The event, the staff yeah, got paid, etc. Massive respect to so uh, Scott Coker. They've done the right thing there. Now... As I said, from a fan, you want to see the entertainment and you want to see the fights happen, whether it's in a crowd or not. You know, it's an interesting interesting watch. But from a personal p- aspect, you're seeing fighters cut weight and, you know, their immune system is always already going to be a lot worse with the weight cut. You're seeing fighters either miss a paycheck or get, you know, they're risking their careers at the end of the day. Yeah. And depending on how long this goes on, whether it's two, three months, there's a lot of fighters that you know, might have to drop out, change careers, find something else to do because they're just not simply not bringing in the money. Well, it's we're going like 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 I say, we're going to really delve into it in the debate, but it's um it's a really difficult one because it's not like the Premier League where they're going to get paid. Yeah, they've got a contract. contract. They're going to get paid. Fighters rely on fighting and commercial sponsorship, so they they literally can't not aren't going to be able to pay the bills. The big fight is fine, but you're talking your, middle your down the roster. roster. How are they going to continue to pay their bill? But not like them. Every single industry in the world is feeling this knock-on effect. So it, it's a difficult one. I know Graham Boylan, Cage in with Cage Warriors, he's absolutely scrambled like a madman to put yeah. Cage Warriors and on this Friday night. I know Dana White was doing the same to get the next three done. Now, UFC London was it was scrapped from London originally and yeah. moved to the States. Now, yeah. obviously, we've had the lockdown. We can't do anything and rightfully it's been postponed. I didn't want Leo Edwards fine out there on 24 hours notice. Yeah. There was talks about Burns versus Woodley, Covington versus Woodley. Yeah. And I think it, we, we've come to the right conclusion with it being postponed for all three events. Now, I feel sorry for the likes of uh, Walt Harris, and uh, who's had all these troubles and he was looking to have a fight against the room. And again, it's been postponed. Now, he's had some trouble in times. Well, let me... Last six months. Sorry, James, we're going to be... <laughs> you are in this show today. I am in this I show I felt today. a bit left out the first few minutes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, in terms of Walt Irish, yeah, absolutely. He's had an absolute shocking three months, and I think it would have been nice for him to get a fight in. Whether mentally that'll give him more time to, I don't want to say get over what happened, yeah. but you get what I mean. Yeah, I mean, exactly. when you're in a mentally bad place, like he will have been with what happened to him, I mean, fighting might not necessarily yeah, be the right path. It could also be the opposite aspect. So he's got a goal and he's had something yeah, to work to. Exactly. So it is. Can it I, uh, sorry, can I just say, Two of the three of the most unluckiest people on the planet. Number one, Paddy the Baddy Bimlet. Paddy the Baddy Bimlet. Oh my God, how many fights has he had rescheduled? You can't understand this guy's luck in the last 18 months. Fight is pulling out, fight is pulling out of fights, but then their fight, then the replacement pulling out of fights. Mm-hmm. Just ridiculous injuries. He's finally got. And this opponent pulled out, and the original opponent on Friday yeah, night pulled right out, again. and then this global pandemic raised its ugly head, and it, it's just unbelievable. Khabib and Tony, I mean, oh my God, tell me John Cavanaugh's tweet. Um, I, I have to get it up, but it was on the light. It was something, nothing will stop this fight other than a pandemic virus, and obviously we're here two weeks later. Well, so I'm sleeping with John Cavanaugh. Yeah, but just <laughs> go back though, just. So in context, John Cavanagh tweeted two weeks ago. Yeah, two, the two only, weeks like, ago. As a joke, the only way Khabib and Tony can't have him is if there's a global pandemic. <laughs> two and weeks there later, there's a this fucking part, I mean, pandemic. It is the only sporting event that appears to be hanging on by the skin of its teeth. Yeah. Dana White figures. is absolutely determined to make it happen. I don't care whether yeah, it goes ta- on. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, Khabib Ferguson, oh, officially sorry, still on. Uh, it's hanging on by the skin of its teeth. It may not happen in the States. Well, it, yeah, may not, it could happen that. anywhere. I don't know where Dana wants to Antarctica. take it. If it's to Saudi, Antarctica, the moon, Jupiter. I don't care where it goes. I want this fight to happen so badly. If Khabib, Tony, if we lose it because Khabib can't stop him from eating tiramisu, because Tony Ferguson trips over a cable, and now because of a global pandemic. <laughs> why? Why can't we just get this fight? But let me just say is that the problem is, is... Like, I'm, I keep saying we're going to mention it in the debate, we will, so I don't want to go on it about it too much. But for me, boxing, 
for me, MMA and boxing, combat sports, we're not as restricted as other sports industries. No. Football have a league. But at the same time, I think the health issues that both boxing and MMA bring are more, they outweigh the... the yeah, I'm not talking, it. forget the health. The health, we all know about the health. I'm yeah. not I'm talking sports-wise, forget about the health issues. S- on the sporting entity, we're used, boxing and MMA fans are used to fights being cancelled yeah. regularly. It's not the norm for the Premier well, League. Katie and Tony cancelled four times now. F- five times? No, this will be the sixth. This will be the fifth, won't it? No, the sixth, this, no, this will, will be. be the fifth. It's only scheduled it five times. Well, I say only scheduled five it times. Only scheduled five times. Ridiculous either way. Five times to lose the best fight in the but sport. can I ask you, do you, the problem, sorry, this is what I was going to say, the problem is, to reschedule it, you've got Ramadan fucking beef, so yeah. that's going to put him out for a few months. But if I'm, if we're really being honest, do you really want to see that fight behind closed doors? Because I want to see it. I'd rather know. see it than not see yeah. it. Yeah, but I believe it. we will see it. Yeah, but how Just long do we wait for? I mean, if it doesn't happen now, it's then we've got be Ramadan. In the crowd. I mean, I mean there, we could, uh, let's see what everyone gets injured. I mean, at the earliest, if it gets called off now, you're looking at like September, what, September October. MSG. I mean, I don't want to wait till then, Mitch. I've I've waited yeah. for years for this. I, just, I don't care if it's behind closed doors anymore. I just want to see it. Yeah, I, I want to see who is better, Khabib or Tony Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, and I think... I want to know. There would be a different aspect, of course, because, uh, again, there's no crowd influence on the fight. So it would be li- literally two warriors going into battle and Didn't we see we the say, best outcome. I know we said with the watch-along that the commentators sway the judges, but it's true with the crowd there. That, that will have a big impact on that uh, judge's decisions because and the I crowd can influence the decision. Uh, with the, the mentality of both fighters, I don't think... It's going to put them off any less. No, yeah, I don't think they, they care. Some people feed off the crowd. Some people yeah. are scared of the crowd. I think these two men don't give a toss. No. No. I think Ferguson is a complete mentalist. He's got a couple mm-hmm. of screws loose. And uh, I mean, he's the sort of person that would give himself coronavirus to improve his immune system. Yeah. And then Khabib, I mean, I mean, I don't think it's the glitz and the glamour of the sport mean absolutely nothing to him. For him, no, it's about fighting not. and his family's definitely on not. it. I've got to say, though, guys, I disagree with you. I don't want to see this fight behind closed doors. I think it's so. Yes. Worst case scenario, if we have to, but I want to see the weigh-in week, the fight week, the weigh-in in front, you know, we have the Conor McGregor moment when it goes like that. I want to see that. And if it's a case of not seeing it and watching it behind closed doors, obviously I'm going to see it. But if it's a case of waiting, even if it's another six months, seven months, the way the world is at the moment, we're going to have to be patient anyway. Yeah, there's there's going to be lack of sports. So I would <coughs> really want to see this really back to how it is Give it because it could be a once in a lifetime fight. This, I mean, in terms of sporting events, though, I want something to look forward to, and that's it. Because I mean, we've lost UFC London, yeah. I mean, boxing we've events, lost, we've lost the next three UFCs, yeah. lost but yeah. boxing yeah. events look like they're going to be cancelled left, right, and center. I mean, all over the states, they've been cancelled. Hearn's about yeah. to lose loads. I mean, I mean, by the time this video goes out, well, I'll probably have an announcement on the Euros that could well be off. No, Euros is postponed to Norway, June, FA, uh, no, next year, but I mean, the next. Pr- Next when year. June 2021. 20 oh, you I thought it was June. Yeah. Right, yeah. so that's official. I mean, the Premier League, that could be cancelled. I mean, we just, there's nothing. I w- this glimmer of sporting light yeah. is Khabib and Tony. Well, if we lose that as to, well. To bring it back, you know, as humans, we have to look, We there's only so many certain things that we look forward to in life to yeah. uh, as escapism. One's music, yeah. one's sport, you know, you've got comedy. All these events that are being stopped, Yeah, you're not, you know, there's, there's always something to look forward to. And at the moment, we're looking, you know, for the next month or two with, not knowing what that deadline is. You know, we, you're at uni. I am, but that's cancelled Our now. main thing is that deadlines are approaching and we do whatever we need to, to meet, meet yeah. those deadlines. And at the moment, we don't have a deadline. Can I just say, I think I think it's anything in life. The most, the worst place you can be is uncertainty. Cause we're you in can't, limbo. We're in limbo because you can't get to where you want to get to if you don't know where you are. And for me, I said it before, I'm in like, there's two personalities with me with this. There's this global panic. This will the economy ever be the same? Will life ever be the same again? Will we ever see sports again? So I'm, I've got this head on. Then I'm just watching normal content. Like yeah. I'm, I'm thinking, fuck, this is not really I happening. Think the best way is so I've got two I think things. the best thing is to try and stick to normality as much as we can while we can and just take it each day as we, as we can. What I will say is that there's no po- if you can make a positive out of this, which you're struggling to find one, I think you will really take everything we take for granted, watching our favourite fighters, watching our favourite sports yeah, stars, definitely. going to the pub, going to be and Larry in a local kebab shop that <laughs> you like to do. I think you we severely, severely, once we get that back, you'll never want to lose that again. And no. I think we'll have a deep, deep appreciation no. for the sports because it's like anything, if you lose something, that's when you tend to really, really miss it. Miss it. And, it's, um, and it's just a case of, 
it is a weird sensation that not being able to like I forgot United United game and Sunday was called off. Like I know it had been, but I was looking forward to what United yeah. spent. And, and, realize and I realised it wasn't. Well. And it's the same with the boxing and same. And I'm finding it to be quite honest with you, I'm finding it hard to watch content not on YouTube, like content like this and other YouTube channels. I I need my fix of content, so I'm in all day. But it's like historic content. It's like fight previews for like I don't know De Daniel De Bruyne, George yeah. Sal, UFC. I'm struggling to watch that content because I know it's not going to be on, even though it's not officially been called off. So I'm struggling with that aspect, really. Yeah. So it's just and just a limbo of anything. But it's just the case of human beings adapt. Will adapt to the situation. Things will become the norm. It is unprecedented times. But like I say, once we get the sports back and we do get. And that's why I really like could be even turning to be like the grand opening of like sports again in the UFC. How good would that be? Anything? Um, so we've gone on about you, uh, UFC Brazil. What, anything else? Well, happened in the let's uh, just recap the rest of the fights. Uh, well, quick, quickly, sorry, just before we skim over Kevin Lee, uh, when he got submitted, he tried to carry on. Yeah, he? oh yeah, he's taken that, down. Yeah, I, see that. I, I think that's. I don't know what happened next. Obviously, he wasn't unconscious unless he went unconscious for a second yeah. or two, and he came back. He looked like he wanted to carry on the fight. Now, Jorge Mazda put out some very um, interesting words on Twitter for saying, like, he missed weight, he should be cut from the UFC because he's done the, the lowest thing he could possibly do by tapping and trying to continue. It's an interesting one. I, feel sorry. <laughs> I do feel sorry for Kevin. Was yeah. it at welterweight? Uh, lightweight. Lightweight. Yeah, I think Masvidal's completely in the wrong here. Don't say, I mean, you can talk about the lowest of the low, but he did try and assault Leon Edwards after a fight himself. Oh, I love him. No, he's right. Uh, he's right, though. He should be missing weight. You shouldn't be missing weight, but I mean... I mean, yeah, let's not get all if high and mighty maybe. and all that yeah. sort of stuff when you're not exactly perfect. But I think Kevin Lee literally is in a position where he's being choked out, the oxygen is being drained from his brain, he's about to go unconscious, and he's sort of had a bit of a blip and tried yeah. to carry on. I don't think it's a mental, I've tried to carry on. Yeah. The fight it's not, I think he, he hasn't done it on purpose. I don't think he knows where he is. Can I, I want to say as well, we debated this a few weeks ago about weight cuts, and I've said it where I don't know why fighters are so fixated on going down in weight. Mm -hmm. And it's proved again, Kevin Lee, he got a winner uh, well to weight, didn't he? No, lightweight. Not no, he went up in weight, though. Uh, it, it was like no, he lost to Rafael dos Anjos that well to yes, did. did he lost? He didn't. Yeah. He, he, he hasn't won it well to weight. What was that head kick on? Uh, Gregor lightweight. Gillespie. Oh, was it? Yeah, all at lightweight. So I just find it bizarre. Then why is he missing? Weight? It's, it's weird. He's in side. again. He's in a limbo because he's too small for the welterweight division and he's slightly too big. For That's what was my point was a few weeks ago. What there should be a division yeah. like a light welterweight division. Or mm. that's the problem with these fighters like Kevin Lee are finding it hard. They're too small for the weight. Cut above yeah. weight division. It's a shame because he's a really, really talented fighter. He is. And he should talker. be in the top 10 quite easily. Yeah, I mean, you could stick that top 65 five division. division would be fantastic. I mean, even the likes of Stephen Thompson at 170 could drop down and stuff yeah. like that. You could find. You get, super you get, fighters. You I don't get understand a lot of contenders it. that. I mean, Conor McGregor would be more than keen to go and win a world title at 165. Yeah, definitely. I don't get why he doesn't do it. I, I ben Askren's keen for 165. You'd have had a star studded division. I, I think Khabib goes up it. for that as well. Yeah. yeah exactly. I, for me, it's one of the most dumbfounded things I cannot explain how no. anyone in the UFC, whether it's a matchmaker, a promoter, I don't understand why they're so against it. I've heard Dana White, he's like, like adamantly yeah. against it. Why? I, I mean, why? I, I guess at the same time, We've had Floyd Mayweather come out and say there's way too many champions in boxing. So we haven't got that problem in MMA and especially at the UFC where we've only got one. No, but there's a different there's per, a difference in but there's a difference between having a, a champion of your weight division. Floyd Mayweather is going out is going on about the how many belts there are in yeah. that division. The UFC, if they make a new weight, there will be one champion. Yeah, but I'm saying at the moment, whether whether it's quite um sort of there's there's a there's only what, eight eight champions? For the men and three, four for the women. So there's only 12 champions available, and that does help in terms of bringing in stardom. I completely disagree. I disagree. At the same time, because. Well, do you tell me the stars? Well, we we've like barely got any stars in the UFC. If anything, yeah. an extra disagree. weight class helps, yeah, maybe yeah. helps bring I in a new star. I, I do mean, think Conor McGregor will be a champion again. I do yeah. think there should be one at between middleweight and light that, heavyweight, that and one between light heavyweight and heavyweight. That gap. That's too it's big. It's like of a two gap. stone, isn't it? Yeah. I right. would happily bring in two more weight classes and get the I don't understand, champions. But I don't understand why it's such an issue. For like, what is going through their brain cells to. Like, I, I, I just don't understand it. Like, there's no reason for yeah. it not to. And it's fighters' health. Yeah, like, you want to you, you wanna think about a fighter's health? Like, they, the reason why Darren Till, you look at his weight cut, and there's a reason he lost his last two fights at uh, World to Weight. His weight cut was, oh, my God, he looked like a fucking skeleton. Like, that is not, that is not human. Even Conor McGregor, I know McGregor did well at lightweight, but 
that, that's not good for your health. That's not putting the fighters first. No. So why don't you put a division? Um, you can get sexy fights. People can get, like you see in boxing, you can have people get, what do they, what's the word they use in boxing? Catch away fights, mm, yeah. you know, things like that. You could have that. The son, Israel Adesanya and John Jones, maybe. Uh, maybe John Jones not going to heavyweight, maybe someone coming down midway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And for me, it taints the sport. I can't understand it for the life of me. I, I'd like anyone to give me one good reason why there shouldn't be a um, different weight classes. <laughs> I can't yeah, understand it. But to finish recapping the fights, we had Hanato Moikano picked up a first round submission win against Damir Hadzovic. Which was, who? There was a bit uh, of verbals after it. Hadzovic, there. yeah, there was. Because basically, uh, he finished it in, what, 44 seconds? And uh, Hadzovic came out and said, I wanted to fight uh, I wanted to fight longer. Oh, no, Mokano said, I wanted to fight for longer. And Hadzovic said, well, you shouldn't have submitted me then. A great, a great, a great comeback. It's one of the sort of Chael Sonnen type yeah. comebacks. I like that. And it wasn't lightweight. Obviously, Mokano's uh, in the featherweight rankings now. He came out and called out Paul Felder, I think, of the lightweights. I think he gets beat by Paul Felder. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. My, it's always difficult. Mokano... Yeah, he's a good fighter. Was high up in the rankings. Did he lose to um, Cub Swanson? Didn't he? I think. Mike Connell, I know he lost to Josie Alda. Yeah, so he, he made his weight quite hot, and obviously Josie Alda's at the top of that that sort of title challenge peak. You have to beat Aldo to get a title shot, as Volkanovski did, and Holloway's beating him. You know, only three people in the UFC have beaten him. I think, right? Yeah, Josie Alda, yeah. Holloway, McGregor, and Volkanovski, and technically Moraes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Moraes. Uh, so, yeah, it's interesting as well. Johnny Walker also lost. Nikita yeah, Krylov lost by How decision. How did he lose, Walker? It was decision, so, yeah. Was that's, yeah. Would you say it was comfortable or...? Um, it's it, ooh, it's not too bad. It's 128 strikes to 91, uh, 45, so it's probably fair enough. When you're watching the fight, though, was it... Yeah, I, do you think think it was I a, don't rate stats. No, it's I'm a fight I'd have to go back and watch. I don't like stats. I no, don't like stats. Stats can be... Because you could literally throw a jab and that's one. counted as yeah. a strike. Yeah, and again, you could you could throw all your strikes in one round and yeah, lose the fight 2-1. Two, two yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's probably a fight I'd have to go back and watch. But it's interesting, Johnny Walker's back-to-back -back losses now. It, yeah. You know, he was the poster boy for that light heavyweight division for a little yeah. bit, and he suddenly just take lost all that again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too long ago people said he was going to beat John Jones. Yeah, I didn't like that. There was a time where we had Chris Weidman, Luke Rockhold, Blahovic, um, Dominic Reyes, yep. and it was like, if, oh, and Jeffrey Souza, of course, and one of these middleweights win, they get a tighter shot, but Johnny Walker was the next one. Corey Anderson dealt with that, and obviously we got the right result with Dominic Reyes coming out, and now probably Blahovic is getting the next title shot. I mean, is Blahovic getting the next title shot? I hope I read, so. I read that Dana White had said that he's looking to give it's Reyes got the rematch. It's got to be Reyes rematch. It's between one of them two, anyway. I, I 110 percent believe it'll be the Reyes rematch, a million percent, because it sells itself. Amazing. People want to see it. Do, do so you who really does Blahovic fight next? Uh, I don't think anyone cares. I don't, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know to be honest, but I think that uh, Dominic Reyes definitely deserves it. It's the right fight to make. It's the biggest selling fight. The only yeah. reason the Reyes wouldn't get it is because. Had to send is it, is it, well, no, I was going to say, how big a risk is it to give oh Reyes yeah. a rematch? I mean, it's not a foregone conclusion that Jones wins the fight. Do you do Reyes versus Blahovic and let Jones have a little time out? No. No, I, if, it, if, if it was personally up to me, I would like to see Jones Reyes. Yeah, I yeah. think I think that is the right fight to it's make. The right fight. But I feel sorry for Blahovic because he's just on that cusp. Yeah, He'll get, he can get the winner. He can get the winner. Definitely. Now, uh, on the prelims, we had Formiga versus Moreno. Moreno won by unanimous decision. Again, in that flyweight division, which is still not got a champion, is still a vacant. Could you see if they could Moreno? Maybe. I mean, I'm assuming Jojo Benavides is likely to get the next world title shot. And let's face it, I mean... I don't think Benavides gets the next title shot. I think Dana White has said that Benavides oh, is getting is the getting next title shot. But either Figueredo. way, I would like him to get it because, let's face it, everybody loves Jojo yeah. Benavides. And I think everybody wants to see him become a world champion. I, I mean, the UFC is just going to keep giving him a shot. Go on, Jojo, have another go. Try again. Have another go, Jojo. This guy just missed weights every fight. Fair enough, you've lost it seven times. But go on, have another crack, Jojo. Everybody wants to see him cross the line. I'll be dosed. It, yep. is, it is sad for him, but obviously he Figu deserves it. He's a world level fighter. He is, and I think you know it depends if we get Benavidez Moreno or Figueiredo Moreno. I think we need something to happen with this flyweight division. Yeah, I mean it is stagnant at the moment, but still for me, I don't think that's a reason to cut it. I mean, me and Johnny were discussing this the other week that in boxing, the likes of Roman Gonzalez, mm -hmm. Chocolatito, and other smaller weight fighters have done so much to bring publicity to those lower weight. Yeah, classes. we need someone. We need a. We need a Connor of a, uh, almost a flyweight Connor, someone who brings eyes to the sport yeah. immediately. You know who I, you know who, you know off. who I believe can do that. Who? I said it last week. Um, two fighters from England: Jack Cartwright, Mohamed Makayev. I believe they bring eyes mm. for their bantamweight. Yeah, they are bantamweight. I don't know if they can cut their extra ten pounds. 
but gets to fly away. I mean, it's difficult. It takes away the legitimacy but even the of the sport. You're saying so. that we're not we're going to get rid of a weight class mm-hmm. because there's no stars. Yeah. It's a sport. Yeah. You need all weight classes. It's like getting rid of League Two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> just ridiculous. Just not use them anymore. Let's just have Premier League and League One. But I mean, there will be stars eventually in those yeah. four yeah. weight classes. Yeah, Robin Gonzalez headlines in America I mean, and gets a huge turnout. We've debated this a few times. It's ridiculous because Dana White did come out and say he wanted it scrapped. I mean, that's yeah. not good, is it? Your promoter's coming out. I mean, where do, where do you leave the fighters? Yeah. Like, what, what goal? What if I'm PFL, I sign him up now. I mean, I try and sign mm, him up and yeah, do a trade or something with UFC. Oh, uh, they say there's no stars, but you can still stick a flyweight me- uh, title fight as a co-main event. Yeah, that's what we I said. Mean, recently, yeah. we've, what, we got Holly Holm versus Raquel Pennington as the co-main. Yeah. I'd rather see a flyweight world title fight as a yeah. co-main. I don't know. Holly Holm has something a bit about her. And she's she, a bigger she's lost she's about 27 fights. Yeah, she's, 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 she's a bigger name. She'll always be the Ronda Rousey She's a bigger name, but I mean, is she a higher quality fighter than a Jojo Benavides? And I think it's I don't think Holly Holm is that much of a star anymore. She is. She, she no, she, was, she she'll was always be ago. the Ronda Rousey killer. But how, basically. Yeah. how interested were you really? And I like Holly Holm. Holm. She's such how a nice you? girl. She's a but killer. And she's how excited are people for Holly Holm, Raquel Pennington? How many pay per views? That was a rematch as well, wasn't it? It wasn't. I mean, Holly Holm's pay per view versus Duran May did no buys whatsoever. I, don't, I think she's a very exaggerated star. I think she's definitely come to the end of the end of her sort Co- of reign, yeah, you know, her career. Uh, yeah. But, you know, Charles, Oli- to recap, we're, we're finish up here almost. Charles Oliveira, what's next for him? A good win this weekend. I really don't know. Give, us, give me a few, hit me with a few well, names. He's, thir- pick, he's ranked 13 at lightweight. So if we go to the lightweight division. I mean, Felder's coming off a loss. Yeah, I think Felder, I was thinking maybe Dan Hooker, Dustin Poirier. Dan Hooker's too high. Dan Hooker's too far Well, he's fifth off. in the rankings. Charles Oliveira is eighth in the rankings at the moment. Dan uh, Hooker should be fighting the likes of Dustin Poirier. I like Quinter. Ali Aquinta could work. Donald Cerrone. Again, another good there's fight. There's good fights for him. There's, there's good fights for him. There's some good fights. Yeah, I thought I was thinking maybe Cerrone would step in against Woodley this weekend. He would step in against any Against, it would yeah. be interesting. You're stepping against me, Ochich. Yeah, uh, Edson Barboza has moved to featherweight. Yes, Bob, I was just thinking Barboza. He's really. moved down to featherweight. He's moved down? Yeah. He's Can moved Barboza make featherweight? Yeah, apparently. Although he's he, he wants out of his USC contract at the moment. I think he he didn't fulfill his potential, Barboza. He's got so much talent. Mind you, like, I don't know if he did the Rubino of like I don't know UFC. If he didn't fulfill his potential. There's just. The cream at the top of the lightweight division is just another no. step le- level, and he got handled by Khabib, didn't he? But that. But Khabib's on another level yeah. to every other level. But do you know what? What really propelled Barboza was that highlight real kick against a Wilk- Liverpool uh, bloke called Terry Etten. No, yeah. it was against a Liverpool uh, fighter called Terry Etten, who was a fucking killer of a fighter. And Barboza absolutely staunched him with a highlight wheel. I think it was a head kick. It was a wheel kick. Spinning like kick. Awesome. Unbelievable. He's the, only, he's the only fighter with two UFC with leg kick finishes. Yeah, he, he, he was he brutal. He all the talent in the world. I don't know if he can make featherweight. I he's a big, big boy. I don't believe yeah. he fulfilled his potential. I don't. I, ha- don't. I, think he had, I think he had a lot of talent. I think... Do I think he was ever good enough to beat Khabib? No. But at the but sa- not Khabib, but, but the others. Time, Every time he stepped up... At the same time, beat. though, with his level of talent, he should really be a full featherweight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's interesting. If he, you know, if he's not happy at the UFC, he could, you know, I know he's asking for PFL, I think, to sign him up. Yeah, which could be interesting. Yeah, Wally. there's definitely enough There's enough out there now where you don't have to be in the UFC. Yep. But I think that's a good place to round it up on. We're going to have some videos, of course, this week. We're going to try and continue as much as we want. Uh, so let us know in the comments, what do you want to see, especially podcast-wise? There's a lack of events at the moment. So Content-wise. We need to know what you guys want as well. So make sure to hit like, comment down below, as I said, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And, of course, make sure you support the fighters at this point as well because it's important that they they get the support and help that we can give them at the moment. So, yes, we'll see you on the next video and enjoy the rest of your week.